Well, the girls are out on the track for their final final. It's the four by 400 meters. There's only four teams, but really, it should be a tremendous final. It really is uh, a Canadian gold medal all the way with the lineup that we've got of Charmaine Crooks, Marie de Payne, Molly Killenbeck and Gillian Richardson, because that's the Canadian team that won the silver medal in the Olympic Games 4x400. Four Mind you, England, Scotland and Australia challenged that, and maybe the best challenge will come from Australia, but the English girls will be battling away, and there's Jane Parry, the lead-off girl. Jane, who's had uh, a magnificent track record coming up through the All England schools, five times, I think, a school's champion, moved up from 100 to 200, was an international swimmer, and now she is leading off for England. For Scotland, Sandra Whitaker. And uh, bronze medalist in the 200, that must have been beyond her wildest expectations when she came to these Commonwealth Games. She's run quite magnificently here. Sandra Whitaker, the 23-year-old Glasgow AC girl that leads off for Scotland. There's Charmaine Crooks, fifth in the 400 metres here. Seventh in the Olympic Games, 400 metres. And uh, the Canadian girl with a best of 50.45 is the one expected to take them into a lead and then... Uh, hand on to Marie de Payne. But Marie Chapman will have something to say about that. Marie Chapman, who's been racing uh, to gain experience in Europe and been improving all the time. Fifth in the 200 here, sixth in the 400, but she was the 1985 Women's 3 A's champion. And it will be interesting to see how long it takes the Canadians to get away from the rest. But uh, they are the clear favourites. So too were their men in the 4x100, and they won it by four one-hundredths of a second. So the final track program for women. England, Scotland, Canada and Australia. Jane Parry will hand to Linda Keogh from Basingstoke, to Angela Pickford from Gateshead, to Cathy Cook, and it'll be nice to see her come home and clutch yet another medal. Sandra Whitaker will hand to Anne Vervis, the United Kingdom 800 metre champion, then Dawn Kitchen and Fiona Hargreaves. Marie Chapman will hand to Sharon Stewart, then to Julie Schwoss, and Debbie Flintoff, the double gold medalist who runs their final leg. She, of course, the gold medalist in the individual 400 and the 400 metres hurdles. Jane Parrott. It's blowing a gale, and those girls are going to hit that once they've got around the crown of this bend. There you go. Run the first lane and the first bend in lanes. Jane Parry gone off hard, chasing after Sandra Whitaker. Australia, though, have gone off hard. And that's a good lead-off. We expected this from Marie Chapman. Charmaine Crooks has got her in her sights, looking just a little more relaxed. She's going to take her time to close that gap. And she's slowly eroding it now. But Jane Parry's had a good leg if she can keep it up. Three of the four will come away with medals. And the crowd rising to them as they come down the home straight and gradually that lead by Marie Chapman has been uh, worn down by Charmaine Crooks but we won't see the extent of that lead until they get out of this bend and close to the inside and uh, it's Canada, Australia, and a long way back, England, and then a fair way back, Scotland. Well, we've been saying for some time that uh, neither England nor Scotland have had any world-class 400-meter runners for a couple of seasons now. It used to be a tremendous uh, uh, team that we could put out in internationals, but Australia are doing the threatening now, and this has been a fine leg by Sharon Stewart against Marie de Payne, and she's prepared to take her on. That really is quite remarkable. Seventh in the 400 meters, Sharon Stewart. And she just came up to the shoulder of the girl who was fourth in the Olympic Games and fourth here. But Marita Payne had saved enough. And suddenly it's going to form. The gap is growing as Canada's Molly Killenbeck gets away from Julie Schwass. And Angela Pickford takes the baton from Linda Keogh. And bringing up the rear, we've got uh, Dawn Kitchen having taken the baton from Anne Purvis. And still the Aussies are really giving the Canadians a terrific fight. Julie Schwarz is an 800 meter runner. She was eighth in the 800. Her best time at 400 is only 54.1, whereas Molly Killenbeck has run 51.08.
and that should show. But suddenly, uh, we've seen this gap grow and grow and grow, and then the exchange, and then a spirited run, and the gap is closing. But this is a gap that won't be closed now. Molly Killenbeck's hand to Gillian uh, Richardson, the silver medalist in the individual 400. But, but suddenly, Kathy Cook comes into the reckoning with a chance of silver, but oh, and there's a bad fall as the girl, Julie Schwartz, handed to Debbie Flintoff. And this is going to be a battle of courage because as uh, Kathy Cook gets away, it's the individual champion of 400 metres that's after her. There's the girl that's picked herself up, Julie Schwartz. The girl way out in the lead, Gillian Richardson, and nobody's going to close her down. Canada have the gold, and Flintoff's gone off. Now, she's gone a little soon, and I wonder if Kathy Cook can just sit on her and wait. Will Flintoff turn the screw and get away? And Kathy's sitting there with the opportunity or the chance. If she takes a silver off Flintoff now, it will be a remarkable run against the individual champion. And so Canada have got the goal. Forget that. And suddenly Kathy Cook's trying to find a little more. And she's getting past Debbie Flintoff. And Kathy Cook's battling for the line. And she's going to take the silver. And she takes the silver to go with the gold, and she sits down immediately, which is her trademark at the end of every 400 metres. Please don't let me run that race again, she says. Well, what a turn-up. Canada take the gold, which on paper they were always due to collect. The Olympic silver medalists take the gold here. Australia lose a silver, which they certainly thought they might have had and should have had. And it was all down to that brave run from Kathy Cook, who didn't panic when the individual champion, Debbie Flintoff, went past her. She settled in, sat with her, waited till the straight came, waited till the wind was behind her, and then took her on. And what a challenge it was as they battled down the straight. There's Linda Keogh and Angela Pigford walking away. The Canadians off on their much-deserved lap of honour but really, it was a battle of the straightaway and the courage of Kathy Cook. Well, what a collection of medals kathy has got now. But, uh, Ron, I, I noticed you making a point there in commentary how often the Australians kept closing the gap on the Canadians. But this Canadian team, you know, and you look at their lineup, they're very, very experienced 400-meter runners. And they knew how to pace the race, don't you agree? Each leg they paced well. Absolutely. The Olympic silver medalists were so confident. Incidentally, there has been an air of confidence about this Canadian squad. I remember saying, I wrote an article at the time saying, Canada are going to have a good games. And they've had a very good games. But uh, this is Angela Pigford coming into Cathy. And then watch the girl Schwartz fall flat on the ground as she absolutely reaches over. Now, Cathy Cook knows now that she's got the individual champion of 400 metres behind her. And she doesn't panic and she doesn't take off into a gallop and try to get away. She's running now, a marvellously paced 400, which she doesn't always do. The Canadian, uh, the Australian girl picks herself up, Julie Schwass. The Canadian girl is away and away to the gold medal. Fine run by her. Now watch the battle as it starts on the back straight. Debbie Flintoff goes past Kathy Cook, and in my opinion, she goes too early. She really goes away. If she was going to go there, she had to open up a gap and keep turning the screw. Now, Kathy lets her go past and sits in, rides against the wind, and then waits until the straight unwinds and watch her pull out now. And with the sprinting speed that she's already shown in the four by 100 meters, here she is digging in, gritting her teeth in the race that she hates. She's not smiling, she's grimacing. And she really is throwing herself at the line and Debbie Flintoff can't believe it. They've lost the silver. Kathy's gained a silver in a quite magnificent run. Using all her experience, she's going collecting that cupboard full of medals in a race which she clearly hates. And she thinks she's got it. And I think husband Gary will be as uh, pleased and as proud of this because he knows how much... Uh, she just doesn't enjoy the event, but she does enjoy winning. And she wins this personal and particular battle, and there's the smile. <laughs> well, John Herbert, the smile says it. He is the Commonwealth champion in the triple jump. 17 metres and 27. But look at Mike making of England with a silver medal with 16 metres and 87. 
and then Beans of Australia, the bronze, with 16 metres of four and 42. Uh, by the way, we've uh, got news of the uh, women's sprint relay earlier. We showed some slow motion uh, on the last leg of the handover between Joan Baptiste of, Great of England and Heather Oakes. And there you see Heather Oakes with her foot on the line there. She went on to uh, lead England to the gold medal. Apparently, there has been an objection. But the jury of, of appeal met and decided there can be no change. There's no advantage gained there by going outside. If you were running on the lane on the inside, you probably would be disqualified. But on the outside there, no, unless you impede the runner in the next lane. So the result stands.